Hello, and welcome to the Ringer NBA show. It's the group chat. I don't know why I did that voice. It's a special Friday edition instead of our usual Thursday. Justin Barrier. Hello. Danny Chow. Hello. Paolo Getty, why are you guys so sad? Are you all of a sudden like everybody here is a Kemba Walker stan? Love Kemba. I've always been a Kemba Walker stan. He's in my heart all the time. You're a UConn stan. Yeah, because Justin bleeds husky. That would actually be dangerous. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It's group chat. It's Friday. We were obviously going to spend most of this show talking about the all-star selections I guess this is just like a now long drawn out process yeah. uh, I remember a time when people didn't really think that much about the all-star game but okay we, really? could, we could spend two weeks talking about this yeah <laughs> right. I feel like it was already two weeks ago yeah yeah, mm. yeah. Um, but first we gotta take, take take a look at this Kemba Walker trade it's not even a rumor it's like straight up like Woj <laughs> just had a story up on ESPN earlier today about uh, the Charlotte Hornets are, are looking to deal uh, yeah. Kemba Walker um, he's the franchise player. He's. We were talking about this before we went on the air about whether he was the second best Hornet ever or third best Hornet ever. Charlotte professional basketball player. Yeah, he's definitely up there. Yeah, he's definitely top five. The only good thing about that franchise right now, right. Probably, pretty much. Um, I I'm kind of confused about why this is happening because it feels more like a baseball trade. It it feels like you know like the way baseball teams are like, oh, we got to the middle of the season, we're not going to win anything. So we're just going to trade off all the best assets we have and try to get back some young pieces in, in return. As a Kemba Walker, a passionate Kemba Walker fan, what do you think of all this? I'm a little torn here. I want what's best for Kemba. And as we were going over potential trade destinations, I found myself trading him to just like nicer cities. Yes. Like I was thinking, <laughs> oh, I think he'd be, he'd really enjoy Chicago. I think he'd like the cold weather. He's from New York. I'd love to see him back in Brooklyn. Obviously, it doesn't make sense because they have like three Seven point, point guards, guards yeah. of the future. Yeah. Uh, but I think it makes sense for Charlotte as a whole. I mean, you wouldn't expect Michael Jordan to just want to tear things down and start anew. But if you look at their team, they're not young uh, and they're not particularly good. Yeah. So you might as well just kind of start over, get what you can, like go the Brooklyn Nets sort of way of maybe getting some picks in there. So d- Kemba Walker's paying for Rich Cho's mistakes right. or Michael yeah. Jordan's mistakes. It, it's really funny that you bring up the whole baseball trade thing because this isn't even like trading for Stanton. This yeah. is like yeah. he is the fourth or fifth highest paid player on his own team. Yeah, yeah right. he's by far the most valuable. He's the he's the carrot and any other p- player on this team is the stick. If you're yep. going to go into a trade and they're like, "Well, you got to take Marvin off our hands. You've got to take Batum or Kid Gilchrist off our hands cuz we made the mistake of overpaying these guys." You can have Kemba on this incredible 12 million dollar deal even if his numbers are a little bit down yeah. this year. I think it's interesting in the context of the trade market in itself because he's very under he's I think he's still an underrated player he's highly underpaid and there's doesn't seem like there's going to be a lot of guys super available so I wonder if the Charlotte saw kind of that opportunity to be like oh it's kind of like a shrinking market maybe we should just do it now because this is the best we're going to get because it seems like a very hard turn so I wonder whether they got an offer or Mm -hmm. thought about doing this and got and put out some feelers and now this Woj story is like, it's a bidding war. It's a very aggressive story. Yes. It's yeah. basically a for sale sign. Yes. And I wonder, like Paolo was getting to, I, I think maybe that's the point, is that they see that everyone's kind of dipping their toe into the market. Everything we're hearing from the news guys out there is that this is pretty much a cold market right now. Nobody's looking to deal. Nobody sees that uh, they're just like one player away. I wonder if Charlotte's basically like, listen, let's just, let's just get rid of all the money off our books and start clean. I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, easier said than done. Yeah, right. Exactly. They have they have literally like a bottle of poison pill contracts. It's not just like one. They have several disgusting contracts that nobody would want to take back. That being said, we our job is to be a little bit creative here. <laughs> Danny, you had maybe the most compelling one, and I know you were just like, this doesn't really work. It doesn't but really I think work. Philosophically, it works. Right. So. I had toyed around with the trade machine. I'm really bad with the trade machine. No Picasso here. Um, <laughs> More of an art brute yeah. kind of, you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it was it was a trade that didn't really factor in the fact that the Hornets need to get rid of other contracts. Yeah, this is more like what makes Danny happy right. rather than what so makes... So yeah. I want to see Kemba on the Spurs. I, that's that's okay. my number one. Love so it. it would be a three-way trade between the Hornets the Spurs, and the Sixers, because obviously they're going to jump on any opportunity to get any kind of asset that they can. Right. Mm. Um, so Kemba would go to the Spurs. Um, what was it? It was Marvin Williams would go to the Sixers, and the Sixers would give 
Bayless to the Hornets. So that's kind of a lateral move. I think they both make around the same, or at least they're on the same amount of years on their deals. My process um, friends would, would not appreciate Marvin Williams <laughs> and his three years and $42 oh, yeah. million. Dollars. Right. <laughs> they, would, they would probably need a pick going. Yeah. Going and Charlotte in that one. so the Hornets would then also get guys like Joffrey Laverne and Davis Bertans, who mm -hmm. I am very high on. And he, he he's expiring, I believe, at the end of the year. So it wouldn't you know, be too big of an investment. Just really quickly, because another piece of news that happened this week was the announcement that Ka Kawhi Leonard is going to be out indefinitely mm, right. as he continues to rehab a quad, despite the fact he also has a, like a small tear in his shoulder, right? Mm. Um, this is a really interesting time for the Spurs because I think they are to some extent playing with house money this season. You know, they, like, they're playing out of their minds considering the talent on hand. It's basically LaMarcus Aldridge and a bunch of guys only Pop has heard of. You know, maybe maybe that's unfair, but like you don't they're like playing Brent Forbes. I like all those guys, but it's just like another like miracle worker yeah. jo job by him. Um, so we're not even clear if Kawhi's going to play this season. You're you're doubtful, right? Yeah, just because of what they said he had, which is tendinopathy, is something similar to what Anthony Davis had in his kneecap specifically. Uh, and this is two years ago. They shut him down for the season. They all, now, in addition to tendinopathy, which is, I believe, is like a disease tendon. Uh -huh. If you look up at the actual definition, it sounds way worse. Right. Well, everything when you look it up on the <laughs> sounds way worse. <laughs> right. Like the common cold. Yeah. The textbook definition of yeah. it. Uh, <clears throat> but that caused Anthony Davis to shut his season down, and he had a debridement of his knee, which isn't technically surgery. I think it's more a procedure yeah. with ultrasound and Just all terrifying. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And it sounds Jeez. bad. And now I don't know to what extent. Uh, Kawhi has that same sort of situation going on, but it doesn't sound good. And if you're saying he's our guy going forward, you really want to push something like that. Basically, the reason I bring all this up is that the Spurs have a couple of younger players that they're developing, specifically DeJounta Murray, and DeJounta they're hoping, I think, would take over the Tony Parker role going forward. Right. If you bring Kemba in, mm -hmm. I mean, they would probably just be like, we like having good basketball players on the yeah. team, and Kemba's on a great contract, and it seems like... He wants to win, and the Spurs are like one of the winningest teams in pro sports. Like it seems like a marriage made in heaven. I uh, don't know whether or not they they feel the need to make any win now moves though. Yeah. From like a fan viewer perspective, I like I don't know how this will ha would happen, but I want it to happen because I just need another relevant team in the West. Like I I don't want it to just be like the Rockets and the War and the Warriors up top. Like because I because I believe in Pop's like ability to turn like you know turn everything into magic. Like right. I want I would like for him to be on there because then you're wasting probably like a really nice season from a Marcus Aldridge too, which is feels weird to say a year removed from what was last season. So I, any, any kind of move like this that puts them at least in that like three to four to five seed range and is like, Oh, like the Spurs are interesting. You know, we can talk about them. Like I'm all for that. Well, what do we think about the Pelicans as a destination for Kemba Walker? I think that they were one Drew Holiday contract too late. <laughs> <laughs> they're definitely they're up against the tax yes. for sure. They have not much to send back, but they do have. I mean, check Diallo is interesting. Frank Jackson, a rookie they didn't play this year because he's been hurt, is interesting. And cool. they always trade their first round pick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they, right. did. they always change their <laughs> trade their first round pick. I think if that's what you're looking for from Charlotte, just a bunch of interesting guys, maybe three point guards and two centers. Like that's <laughs> kind of. Yeah. I mean, that's basically what they're doing with Rondo and the. The Rondo thing hasn't worked. I think the Hornets are I, the way. If you read the Woj article, one way it's just like everybody's for sale. But I think what they're doing is they are going to sweeten some deal for a bad contract with Kemba, mm. and so it, it it does make it complicated for teams like the Pelicans who are up against the tax and also need to give Boogie this huge extension if they want to keep him, uh, or new contract if they want to keep him, for them to make anything like that work without bringing back Marvin Williams or you know, or somebody in return. Yeah, who has expirings now? Like, the right. Bucks, for instance, would make a lot of sense. We were Do you think the Bucks regret uh, not Bledsoe? going yeah. back in time and having Kemba <laughs> instead of Bledsoe? <sighs> Bledsoe definitely fits what they do yeah. defensively yeah. really well, and but you could also make the argument maybe they shouldn't be blitzing as much or whatever they do with Jason Kidd, mm -hmm. uh, and that's the issue. But I think overall, I think Kemba's a better player on a better contract. Especially because Bledsoe is going to be way better. Yeah, yeah. yeah Bledsoe is going to need to get paid this offseason. We threw out a couple others. Like I threw out uh, Amir Johnson and whatever else you'd need as a sweetener for Kemba. And I guess we would take back. I mean, like we probably have the cap space. Sixers, we, I sound like Bill. <laughs> like the Sixers have the cap space to take back a bad deal in return, especially, you know, if you, if they want to send back Marvin Williams. You could probably do that if you could make the money work. Do you, do you want that, though, as a Sixers fan? Like, because that's kind of like a win now ish move. 
it it is a win nowish move, but w- like the Sixers keep winning yeah. games, so right, right. Well, they are winning now. Like I yeah. I I, I kind of don't know what to do about this because I mean there's they're, not a lot of risk with it. They've lost yeah, Reddick true. for a while. Fultz is in a box, you know what I mean, <laughs> which just goes I'm, off to the side. And honestly, if this happened, you could just be like Fultz is shut down for the season, right? You know, it, it, it's tough for you to say. Yeah. No, but I think that like that Mark Stein wrote about that in the Times where he was like, I don't want this to be true. And in some ways I want this to be a reverse jinx, but I think that they're going to shut him down, that we're not going to see him play this season. But yeah, Kemba's 27. Sense. They want culture guys there. I think that Kemba could, you know, he gives them exactly what they need, playmaking on the ball, shooting off of it. It's a, it's an interesting move if they could make some of the deals work. I just haven't figured out exactly what it would be because you could just do a mirror for Kemba straight up, but obviously Charlotte would be like, <laughs> what the, what the hell would we do with that? Right. right. Uh, I mean, I guess you would just throw away your opportunity cost of going into the off season if you're Philly and saying we could pretty much have our mm-hmm. pick of guys because there aren't a lot of teams with cap space. Right. So you're pretty much saying, would you prefer Kemba Walker over? Contavious Caldwell Pope yes. or Avery Br- <laughs> 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 over Avery Bradley, yes. some of these yes. other yeah. guys. So yeah, for both I think he would really live up to the moment yeah. in Philly. I think, they, I, I think Philly would, nice. would love him too. Yeah. I saw fun. also Sean, uh, like we were throwing around some ideas on Slack and Sean, you know, somebody meant Nil Aquina for Canvas straight up. Bring him home. Yeah. Oof. He'd be great there, man. He'd have to, have to love do to some things there. to make it work. Yeah, it doesn't work he needs financially. To stay, financially. Yeah, you could you could throw some pieces around, right? But I mean you know, we asked our resident Knicks diehard, Jason Concepcion. No. He he was hesitant. Yeah. Hold on, but no. MSG is where Kemba thrives, baby. <laughs> I'm in. Did I'm anyone in. watch I, the Big East tournament? <laughs> <laughs> I have it on loop in my office yeah, if you no, need no, it. No, that <laughs> shot in <laughs> Big East pit. Yeah. It's worth mentioning. Uh, Kemba's devastated by all this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And apparently we're recording this at like around 10 a.m. on the West Coast. So by the time this goes up, uh, the, an interview with Kemba Walker will probably be up where apparently he gave a raw an emotional and honest uh, statement about all this, and he doesn't want to be traded. He wants to stay in Charlotte. So it'll be interesting to see the way this plays out. It's is one of the more like forthright, like they, they really did put, like you said, the for sale sign on Kemba. So we'll see. I don't know. We'll, we'll, otherwise, the deals that we've kind of heard about, we've talked about either on the site or on other episodes of the Ringer NBA show this week. There's there was the rumored Tristan to for DeAndre deal, which has been laughed at mm. by Brian Windhorst, and I would I would believe Brian's sense of humor about that. Um, <laughs> really funny guy. Yeah, but there's also like, you know, I mean, Rissolo was talking a little bit about how they love Bo- like LeBron loves Boogie. I don't mm. know how they would make that work or what they could do for New Orleans to even sug- like possibly entice them aside from the Brooklyn pick. Would have which to be, love would have to would be, have involved, to be involved, right? Which I really like that fit. love the yeah. Brooklyn pick for Boogie. Yeah, I think. Uh, Anthony Davis, Kevin Love really makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I just don't think Anthony Davis would prefer to play with Kevin Love. No, over based on, right. on all the selfies he's been taking with <laughs> Rondo and Boogie, I feel like they've yes. got yeah. that's the Goonies. Uh, any other trades you guys have been curious about this week? Or ones that have popped up? I don't think there's been another one, but I think I think if I had to like bet on something right now, I would bet that DeAndre Jordan's going to get traded. Because the Clippers have been kind of yeah yeah story yeah. of the year. But we've been talking about this a lot in the right. office, just because if you look at when DJ's been out these past few games. Which, by the way, that's weird that DJ's been out these past few games because he's yeah. never mm-hmm. out. Yeah, uh, I think it makes a lot of sense roster construction wise for the Clippers because do you really want to have a lot of money tied up in the center position if you have Blake Griffin, who I think thrives. Uh, as kind of a more small ball four, or excuse me, five, and then you have Gallo, who's as big as a five now. <laughs> right. yeah. Is Gallo ever going to play Who for knows? the Clippers? Who knows? Yeah. Seems like his butt issue is really like, <laughs> lingering here. Really a, an aggressively medical episode of group chat today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, but I, I just th- I think it makes a lot of sense, especially the way Harrell has come on yeah. right. uh, these past few games. I think he gives them what you really need from a, a center next to yeah. Blake Griffin. Lateral movement, yeah. long arms, it's kind of stout body. It, it, he's And he's a guy who doesn't, get paid a lot so right. that's exactly what yeah. you kind of want from the center position now it's yeah. it's kind of the the rockets model yeah right, right. Exactly. every time a, yeah. a player gets overpaid you kind of just yeah. ship them aside all-star yeah. all-stars coming uh <laughs> here so I, I i mentioned at the beginning of the show i felt like in like the mid 2000s early 2000s like and i think this obviously corresponds with the rise of like digital sports media needing tons of stuff to talk about all the time and like the scale at which sports media operates sure. yep. that the all-star game has sort of expanded along with it. You know, I don't know what the chicken or the egg is there, but it's interesting that we're now, you know, several, like a, a full 
almost month away from All Star, the All Star game, right? Mm-hmm. If, and we're still like, we've been talking about this a lot. We've been talking about the selection process, the captains, whether the fans are stupid for voting for this person or not, and it's kind of it's kind of amusing, but it's weird. It's it's interesting that the All Star and the MVP conversation have started to take over that much space. I don't know what the the answer to that is, other than like the the sort of industrial ills that I would describe. I mean, I Mm -hmm. I remember back when the only time you did all star voting was when you went to a movie theater. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, or a game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's it's weird because uh, I think it's almost like we we crave having like taking a snapshot of the league. We did that top twenty five ranking a few weeks now. and it's just nice to kind of get a sense of where everybody is, like what guys think. I think the player vote, even though those guys don't take it seriously, is the most interesting oh, part. Yeah, yeah. Thing. That's so Luke good. Canard, <laughs> yeah. everyone getting <laughs> all one the guys vote. voting for themselves. Yeah. yeah, but I think it. I think it's interesting when, for instance, Demarcus Cousins, uh, the players like him over, let's say, Lamarcus Aldridge. Yeah, I, I mean, I, the the New Orleans voting block was real. Let's go over this. So the starters were announced. The starters were selected. Uh, it was a, a vote determined um, by a vote from fans, and then uh, players. And a select group of media. So the Eastern starters, Eastern Conference starters, are LeBron, Kyrie, DeMar DeRozan, Giannis, and Embiid. Love it. Not many, not many issues with that. Well, I have one big issue. Um, well, first of all, I think the, the way we're doing it now with the front court having three positions and the guards have two is just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I don't think that Embiid would have been there if we just said, let's take the five best guys in the East. Come Are you serious? On. Come yeah. On. I think so. I think, who, who, I think, first of all, oh, Horford wow. should get. If you, if oh, just, God, oh, there you oh, go. Oh, oh, you you you've been you brainwashed. The same person. <laughs> Are you serious? Okay. Yo, do you really, really, really? want to see. Flat-footed jumpers. No, oh, okay. first, like, you want to see dribble handoffs? Yeah. No, but I'm saying if we're, we're saying picking Perfect the screens. five best guys, I, I think he's the better. The five best no, guys. No, no, Joel Embiid is. Are you serious? He's man? production wise the, better, but oh. efficiency. Oh. Horford is shooting 52, 43, Justin, and nope. 72. Justin, the That's insane game is from a center. Entertainment. Oh. How is Horford more entertaining no, than? No, 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 no. I'm saying he's a better. Oh, just a better player. Disagreeing with what he's actually saying, like, 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 there's no question that Embiid should yeah. be there for the marquee value, right? Oh yeah. I'm yeah. actually saying no, yes. <laughs> no. Yes. He doesn't play. Like he's missed oh, what nine God. games? Okay, let's not get into and the he's TNT. Like, he is the uh, anchor of now. the best defense you in the sound league. Sound like Andre Drummond yeah. right now. <laughs> just FYI. <laughs> okay. But okay, the other argument I do want to make is I think you can say that Oladipo is better than both of those other guards. Uh, okay. Interesting. Uh, because if we're talking about two way impact. Old Depot actually plays defense, where the other two, I think, just are marginal no, defenders. Because I, 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 I wow. just don't care about Kyrie Irving <laughs> at all. And I, I'm fine with you want to have this argument. I think DeRozan's taken a leap, and I, I recognize that. I think he's just, he's changed his game. I, I just think he's been amazing this first half of the season. I can't I, imagine the starters. I, and him. also, you, I think you have to credit the impact he's had on their success. They are clearly the second. But best I, team in the I did right what now. you're saying. Like that's that's like an out of the box pick. I like the Oladipo. No, well, you know. I would even say like we're we're relying too much on past results. There, oh. we're saying that Demar Derozan, Kyrie Irving are guys who are used to being in this conversation. I think a lot of people are looking at Oladipo and being like, uh, oh, maybe he's a flash in the pan. Maybe it's a Drew Holiday situation when he got in. Okay. Um. So you want to have the Eastern Conference All Stars featuring Al Horford and Victor Oladipo? Hell huh? yeah! <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> that is definitely like the Jacksonville versus Philadelphia <laughs> Super Bowl that, that the NFL what, does not want. What about Porzingis? How do like because mm-hmm. I think that is it just a lot the recent stretch that he's been pretty bad. Yeah, lately. he's been pretty he's been pretty bad lately. But like he started off like in the MVP conversation. Sure. Yeah. So I don't know. I think there's also kind of a small I guess because of the recent stretch, there's not really a case to be made for him. But he, I think, belongs in, in, in that group. And, and, and he was and close. Porzingis, he was picked yeah, by uh, got the, play, the player, got the player vote, yeah, vote over exactly. Embiid. Did he? Okay. Yeah. He just needs no, more naps. I, I think it's, that might also be because Embiid trash talks and like right. and like shows up like half sure. the league. So they probably are like dying to vote for him. <laughs> he needs to overcompensate for the fact that he's right. not better than Al Horford. Okay. <laughs> the Western Conference All-Star <laughs> starters are Steph Curry, James Harden, Kevin Durant, uh, DeMarcus Cousins, and Anthony Davis. Um, this is a cool team. It's kind of weird. It's just like yeah. two Warriors, two Pelicans, and Harden. Uh, Sam Presti is crying somewhere. Um, <laughs> I, I can't argue with it. You know what I mean? Like, it, well, it, I, I guess this goes back to your your big men, your your two forwards, and uh, it's or the three three big men, two guards thing. Right. Where I don't know. I mean, how much time has AD missed? It's a few games. It hasn't been that many. Hasn't been that, that much. much. Yeah. 
I mean, the I'm, fact that Butler isn't in is criminal. That's, yeah, that's yeah. what I was going to say. I would yeah. love to see Jimmy on this team. Butler, but. and he, I think you could make a real argument for LaMarcus. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I definitely would have picked LaMarcus over Boogie. Listen, if you're just saying superstars and star power, obviously Boogie is a star. And I think it matters a lot to New Orleans, a team that's very much still trying to sell uh, its players yeah. and its franchise mm-hmm. to the city and to everyone at large. Nobody really pays attention to them still, even though they have like one of the more interesting roster constructs of the league. Um, but if you look at what's been holding that team back, they're still 23 and I think 21 right now. Yep. It's just the stuff that Boogie doesn't do, which is get back on defense. Yeah. Uh, really kind of yeah. play. play every play. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Holiday's been better. Some of their like reserves have even been better. It's really just what Boogie hasn't done, and that should be on him. I think you can make the case that he doesn't deserve to be in the All Star game altogether. Wow. Well, the fact that they're both in there is in a way an indictment of like. How the team is doing, you know, because they should be better. Yes. So, I really feel like the fan vote it correlates with fantasy success, and Demarcus has been killing in fantasy. Oh, that's a good. great so point. Th- that's you know when yeah when we talk yeah. about casual viewers and what people want to see, they want to see these numbers being put up. Yeah, and Boogie is so, on Twitter a lot. Like yeah. you know, you see like Boogie pretty much every night, even if it's not for the best reasons. He's right. like he's very visible. To be fair though, Boogie's numbers are are significantly better than Aldridge's. So good, so but. He- Aldridge yeah. is playing really well for a really good team that doesn't yeah. have much. And else. he is the right. team right now. Yes. Like he yeah. is the guy who like gets them up to the top of the mountain, and then wh- whoever, what on any given night, Rudy Gay or somebody else on the on the Spurs might push them down. It. Um, all right, so let's talk a little bit about what comes next because Steph Curry and LeBron James are the captains, right? So they will select with no conference alliance or affiliation. <laughs> they have to first pick the starters. So they pick, they go back and forth. LeBron picks first because he had the most votes. And so LeBron will make his pick, then Steph. They have to pick from the group of starters first. Then on uh, next Tuesday, I mean, this, all, this, is how, I, this is also like Byzantine. I don't even understand it. Next Tuesday, the reserves are announced, correct? Yes. Or at least yes. they're selected. 23rd. 23rd. And, then, and then they will have a secret draft that we will not be privy to. <laughs> Nobody will be right. privy to. Except- but LeBron gets the yeah. first pick. So yeah. in the absence of that, and we'll be doing a lot of stuff about this, this secret vote on Survivor that we have. <laughs> but I wanted to do a little bit of method drafting. So mm, we're not drafting it. for what we think. We're drafting for what we think LeBron and Steph think. Right. right? Okay. So let's just do a couple of rounds. Let's at least do the starters here. So Justin, after after having our little flare up, <laughs> I want to give you the first pick. You're LeBron James. I appreciate that. I look good right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really working out. You so. really enjoy seafood <laughs> pasta. <laughs> yeah. You're never hurt. <laughs> That's lots of vino. Okay, I think... If you're just looking at the draft board, I think Anthony Davis jumps out to me. But I want to think about this a little bit differently. Yeah, you got to think about it psychologically here. And if you watch his interview in the locker room last night, he said that he was going to think about this a little bit more strategically. Okay. Of course. Number one pick in this draft, Kyrie Irving. Wow. Because if you're looking at this season as a whole, you, you want to say, oh, well, their kind of clash is going to be kind of the storyline going into the playoffs. I want Kyrie on my team because I'm going to fuck with him the entire time. I'm going to so I'm, I'm going to freeze him out. I'm not going to say a word to him. And so when we see each other in the playoffs, nobody's going to know what's going see, on. That's I love much this. more diabolical. Yeah, I thought you were saying that because you were like, LeBron wants to snuff out the Kyrie versus LeBron stuff and not uh, have to spend an entire week answering questions about right. it. <laughs> so he's like, I picked the guy. I love him. You know, no love, you know, n- n- nothing but love for that guy. Shout out to him. Can't wait to see him in the playoffs. And then he doesn't have to answer any more questions about it. But if yeah. he doesn't pick him, people are going to be like, did you not not did you not did you pick Kyrie? The right. entire weekend becomes a subtweet, which I feel like LeBron would appreciate. Right. But there are so many different ways in which he can create this subtweet. I was thinking he would pick Giannis. Yeah. Instead, <laughs> uh, because I feel like KD would be the obvious choice. Right. So you That's put the one I best thought. Players. I would pick KD if I were LeBron just to break up the Warriors and just like almost like Adam Silver calls him. He's like, just don't. I don't want to see three but Warriors together. I also mm-hmm. think that there's been a lot of talk about how KD's trying to take the mantle and everything. He's not trying think, to take the mantle. I, I he didn't I, want I, to be I, a captain. I don't, I don't, I don't think <laughs> that was right. Uh, but I don't think I don't think LeBron would give him that. that oh, honor. okay. Like KD is right. positioning himself to right. be next. All right. So Justin LeBron <laughs> Verrier James has picked Kyrie Irving yes. first. Steph Danny Curry Chow. This is this is the most. That's actually a pretty cool yeah. name for you. <laughs> I like My it. middle name is legally King. Also, there you go. Wow, um, this is going to be a boring pick, mm. but I think it it speaks to Steph Curry, uh, Kevin Durant. Okay, yeah, all right, that makes sense. That's who yeah. I would pick. If, if, if <clears throat> yeah, that's who Mallory Rubin would pick, our, our greatest <laughs> drafter, uh, Paolo. You are LeBron James. This is your third pick, and I pick. and I already have you have Kyrie, Kyrie Irving. Irving. Um, hmm. we did a questions roundup on the Ringer uh, for like 
all-star storylines. And I said, okay, so LeBron first pick. I mentioned he could troll Kyrie by picking him. But I think the pick that I would like for him to make, and I, I know this is method drafting, but I think it would make sense is for him to draft Embiid. Mm. But would he? I think he would. Be like, okay, let me okay. play with this guy, see what it is. Philly is a possible destination in the summer. Not to put that out there, but like, you know, if he if, if Embiid ends up playing on LeBron's team, you know that's going to be a storyline. Like, oh, like let's see how Embiid and LeBron look on the same, you know, side. So I that's that's who I'll pick. wait, hold on. Are we basically just giving the East all stars and the West all stars? We're doing method drafting. So now I'm Steph Curry. LeBron is going east. I'm not gonna go west because I'm sure I have gotten a if at all possible, draft guys from outside of your conference to show that this is a workable strategy for the All-Star game going forward. Mm -hmm. So as Steph Curry, I'm going to draft Giannis. Okay. Yeah. That's a good one. That's good. All right. So we have Team LeBron is Kyrie, Embiid, and LeBron. Team Steph is KD and Giannis. (laughs) Say (laughs) he Okay, Justin, Steph Steph Curry, yeah. Uh, No, I'm Steph. I drafted Giannis. Okay. So you're LeBron, LeBron and you have Kyrie and Embiid and yourself. Okay, I'm going to go a little more outside the box. I'm going to go with Anthony Davis. Okay. I'm going to go with the big front line. I'm going to pound him in the post. I like it. LeBron, Kyrie, and then Embiid and Davis. That is <laughs> wild. <laughs> They're going to end up with DeMar because he's definitely getting picked last. Is there room on the court for these guys? Right, like, probably. Yeah. Okay, so who do you got? Okay, so I'm Steph now. Mm-hmm. Yes. You uh, have KD, Giannis, and yourself. KD, Giannis, and myself. You still have Harden, DeRozan, oh, Harden Boogie. and Boogie. I will have to fight the Giants with with the beard, I guess. Nice. Oh yeah. my God. So we have insane. Harden, KD, Giannis, and Steph. It's literally the MVP discussion right yeah. now. Yeah, this yeah. Is yeah. <laughs> this is great. All right, LeBron. Okay, so either, either DeRozan or Boogie. Yeah, and you already have two Tough. centers. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, uh, DeRozan, I guess. That would, you know, that's, cool. that's fine. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> Team fine. Steph is <laughs> Stephen Curry, Kevin Durant, Giannis, Harden, Boogie. Love it. LeBron's team is LeBron and Kyrie and B. Davis and DeRozan. <laughs> this is going to be yeah. awesome. Oh my God. <laughs> Wait, hold on. This is great. But this is going to be incredible. Do we have to, I mean, when they actually do the drafting, do they have to stick with the position? You have to draft from the starters first. But that's. But it doesn't matter if you take four centers. That's a good question because right. And when you pick the starters, you had to have three front court, two guards. Right. Right. No, have, it says here. It says it says here at least in, according to the report. I, as far as I as I understand it. They they pick without any with no conference affiliation from the pool of starters and reserves. The reserves will be selected by NBA co- coaches. You have to pick the starters first. Right. So that's it. Yes. Oh hell yeah. That's this is great. way too confusing. By the way. Yeah. You have to I, consult well, this, this is document. Why I don't understand. Like this is criminal that they're not doing this on television. Right. Yeah. Right. At I least did, do the what? starters because I, probably the issue was the last guy of the reserves was going to look very bad. Yeah. yeah. But if you're but still you, a starter in the All Star right. game, it's like I think. There was all these funny scenarios of like you know Russ going last or whatever. You know what I mean? Like these these things. I I just think that they ha- I cannot believe they're not telling. Well, to your that. point earlier when we started this conversation about how this like this rise of how much we're talking about this game is because of digital media and like just so many fans paying attention to everything and we need things to talk about. Like they literally made this move, at least from what it seems, to please the fans to give them something different to make the All Star game interesting. But at the same time, they're like number one, making it confusing. And number two, not like publicizing you it. Always, like, you know, you always got to add a little bit of controversy. Next year, if this works out, maybe we I get guess, the televised. Yeah. I mean, when draft, I look at the, the starting lineups we came up with, I'm like, yeah, like, sign me up. I'm ready. Yeah. But it would Sometimes be I so wonder, much better. It, it could be actually like legitimately a CBA thing where they're just like, <laughs> why would we give you this like blockbuster television thing for f- for free? Like, like, right, you have to like pay. low key tampering? Do you want all the greatest players in the NBA to like somehow congregate and then get humiliated yeah, by like point. who's picking who first I mean, or second aren't there enough like kias to give give out like well <laughs> the play the players also did their own award show on bet once and it was not great no so, i know and they so, have like the fashion show i mean like yeah. i'm not saying that the players are like out here making fellini films i'm just mean <laughs> they I, I can imagine if this would be probably one of the most talked about tele non-game televised yeah. events yeah. other than the draft you know, you would yeah. you would be like, we need to be like involved in this. You Have know? you guys seen the video of when the NHL did this? I believe last year, 
it's heartbreaking. The guy who went last is not only like the biggest schlub you've ever seen, but he's like he does not know how to feel because these Phil hockey Kessel, teams, right? Are, Phil Kessel, I think. Sure. Yeah, yeah that's, I'm pretty sure that's what. Right. No, no, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but hey, these teams are know, like I, 20 players deep, so there's just like stadium or, or just stands full of guys, just like a sea of faces. Yeah, that's the other. And thing. he's there you like do it like that. He's basically the 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 squiggly line face emoji where he's like, I don't know how to feel about this. Just don't interview. And they bring him down. And they force him to give an interview, and they give him a shitty car. Yeah, it's not great. And the hockey guys are already not giving like Abraham Lincoln speeches anyway, so they're probably <laughs> just like, Oh no, uh, <laughs> tough man. Eh? Uh, all right, that was my hockey player. Guys, any other All Star voting th thoughts? Anybody that you think would be a, you feel like is on the bubble that you will throw a fit if they don't get in as a reserve. Anybody who's, you're like, this guy has to be part of the reserves. Lou Williams. Ooh, love That's it. That's a good one. I think Chris Paul, even though he hasn't played enough Ooh. games, his numbers Come are on. fucking insane. I know, but he just, like, he really missed that a lot of time. He missed a man. lot of time. But I was also the type of guy who voted Embiid for Rookie of the Year. So I feel like this is the same line of thinking. And then you denied him his chance to get into the All-Star. <laughs> well, he's going to get in. Democratically just... elected All-Star starter. He does not start. No. <laughs> not on my team. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anybody else that I would be like, you got, you get, you can't not. Personally, I think Kevin Love should be an All-Star, but... That's going to be a discussion for sure. The right? last yeah. 10 games Personally. have been tough for him. Yeah. So basically, yeah. the Isaiah Thomas era has been a little bit rough for Kevin Love's That's more revival. On... IT. Yeah. I, I wonder if the two <laughs> Wizards are going to get in. I if, think Beal will. I don't know if Wall will. Yeah. If anybody from the Pistons deserves to get in. I would say no, but the East is a mess. I, is, I, I don't have a, a feeling one way or another on it. I just cannot wait for Damian Lillard not to make it. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't deserve... I think he shouldn't make it simply because he seems like he's campaigning for it now. Well, he's already trying to have a chip on his shoulder about not making it. <laughs> right. right. But, and the whole thing is it, that whole like narrative that he's built around himself, completely obscured the fact for me that he's actually been on the All-Star game before. Yeah. I yeah. thought he I oh, thought yeah. he'd never yeah. been. Yeah. He he throws these tantrums about this like not being considered. And that this year was actually to be fair, it's, this is it's usually bullshit, but this is newsworthy for this time because this is the first time I feel like he made we're in a small market noises. And he was like, mm. you know, usually being in a small market doesn't matter anymore that much, but I do feel like if I was on t national television right. more and all this other stuff that I would be considered a, a, a logical All-Star. I like CJ McCollum better. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where I'm at. <laughs> that's good. All right, guys. Uh, until next time, this has been NBA Group Chat. We will be with you next Thursday.